What's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Today in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you some of my tips and tricks to help you edit faster inside DaVinci Resolve. Let's get into it. One of my first tips and tricks inside DaVinci Resolve as a shortcut and time saver is the zooming in and out, but smoothing it out. So we all know that you can zoom stuff in over here. Uh, I'm going to hit Command Z to get that back to normal, as well as under the inspector, they have the dynamic zoom. We can turn that on. We can also change the direction that we want it to go. That's all fine and dandy. However, I don't care for the customization of that. If you're in a hurry, that is a great way to go. It's built in. It's fantastic, but that's not what I want. So I I want to have this zoom in at a certain point and then stop. My favorite way that I found is still adding a keyframe and then going over here to the left, adding another keyframe, but let's go ahead and zoom that in a little bit. And then we would just play it through and it would zoom. So instead of going inside the clip, having to find the keyframe and then smooth it out, go to the other one, smooth it out, but make sure we're clicked on it because otherwise it's not gonna work. And then you've got that same thing. That's fine. However, it's not really saving us a lot of time. So what I like to do is I like to just go when I'm inside the transform already. When I'm on the keyframe, I right click on that keyframe and right here I have ease out go over to the other one, right click on that, ease in. It's taking that same step that we just did inside the clip, but making it a little easier and just doing it right there. Tip number two is all about saving time inside the color tab. So if we hop inside the color tab right here, we have each individual clip that we could go through color. Let's say for example, that we want to desaturate the entire image and we want it to be black and white. There's a couple different ways we could do this. We could go click on each individual clip. You could desaturate it to zero, go to the next one, desaturate it to zero, so on and so forth. That's definitely not the fastest way to do it. So what I have found to work the best is instead of going through each individual clip still inside the color page we go right up here to the very top you can see clip if you drop that down you can change that to timeline and what I'm gonna do is hit option s on a Mac you could always right click and add node that way but option s is a shortcut on Mac this is now going to color the entire timeline instead of just specific areas or clips so if I go down here and desaturate that node to zero I can jump back into the edit page and you can see everything is desaturated if all the clips are balanced throughout it I think this is a huge time saver to just add that little bit of sprinkle on top the entire timeline number three on time saver slash my favorite shortcuts slash I don't even know anymore is all about timelines. So if we hop back into the edit page, you can see I've got a couple different timelines. I've got timeline two, timeline one, timeline three, and each one of them are a little bit different. When I'm doing certain projects, I like to set up a timeline specifically for B-roll. If I'm shooting a wedding, if I'm shooting a documentary, an interview, whatever it is, and I've got a bunch of B-roll that I need to overlay it, instead of having a super messy timeline, which most of us do that are editors, uh, I like to have multiple timelines so I can go back to it and I can pick where all the B-roll is. So what I like to do is instead of just going through and clicking each timeline, which can get a little chaotic unless you have separate bins and they're just floating over here, you're gonna lose it in all this footage. Footage. So what I like to do is right here under the viewer, there is a timeline view option. I'm going to click on that and the default is normally the middle. Uh, I like to turn it to the first one that is the stacked timelines. So if I click that and then click off of it, you can see that three is now there. If I go ahead and open two, two is there. If I go ahead and open one, one is there. And now I can go through and click on each one of my timelines and it'd be right there instead of having to go up to the media pool and find it that way. As well as if you're going to add a new timeline, click on it and now you've got a new timeline right in there. Now, tip number four that's still in the timeline is all about staying organized. This is all about color coordination. Now we know you can change the clip colors by right clicking on it, going to clip color, and you can pick whatever color you want. That's great. I highly recommend that, especially if you've got B-rolls, interviews, different locations, whatever you're doing. I think clip color is a massive time saver and will help you stay organized. However, something else that I really like to do is I like to go through on the tracks and I like to make them certain colors. So if I know my interviews are all on the bottom, I'm gonna keep them all on video one. I'm gonna keep them all the same color. Then what I like to do is on maybe video track two is I can right click on it and I can change the track color, let's say pink, and let's say that's gonna be 
different interviews or different B-roll or a different location. And then I can do the same thing on video timeline three. I could click on that. We could do blue. We're already blue. So I'll right click and do something else. Let's say beige. Sure. Now I've got all these different colors and no matter what I'm bringing in here, it's going to stay that color depending on where I put it. I think this is a huge time saver and I wish I would have done something like this earlier on in my editing career. Now, before we get to the last few of this video, let's talk about the sponsor of this video, which is also a time saver, and that's our sponsor, Artlist. I've been using Artlist for multiple years now and they're always saving me time. Now, they do have multiple plans. They've got some that is just music and sound effects. They've got another plan that's just geared towards video as well as my personal favorite and the one that I use, Artlist Max, that's giving you everything. Hands down, the one thing that saves me the most time is when I'm looking at that amazing footage they have on Artless Max, and it's immediately gonna start pulling up music and sound effects that's gonna go with that. So I don't have to go searching for that later in their website. Again, it's making my life that much easier and giving me a quicker turnaround on those videos. If you're wanting to check them out, I'll have a link in the description below. Use that code, and it'll get two extra free months when you sign up for a yearly subscription using it. Thank you so much, Artless, for sponsoring this video and other creators just like me. Tip number five is all about faster playback and saving you time when you're cutting up those long interviews. So inside DaVinci Resolve, if I'm gonna hit play on something inside of Mac, I'm pretty sure it's the same as PC, I'm gonna hit spacebar and it's gonna play through it at normal speed, that's fine. The shortcut to make your life easier is to click L, which is also gonna be playback, but I'm gonna click it again, and now you can see it is two times the speed. So if I play that through again, you can see two times the speed. If I click it again, four times, so on and so forth. I don't recommend doing, you know, eight, 16 times speed if you're trying to cut through footage, but if I'm trying to get through something pretty fast and I can still hear and understand what they're saying, two times speed is just fast enough to save me a lot of time to then when I'm at that spot that I need to be to go ahead and cut around it, then I'm just gonna hit space bar and it's gonna stop right there and then I can listen to it at a normal speed. Now, last tip number six is all about cleaning up your timelines. If yours looks anything like mine, this is very not bad at the moment. I just use it as an example, but most of mine is multiple layers deep. It's all different colors, different audio, so on and so forth. So much that where you have a hard time moving around your timeline. So what I recommend doing is before you do this, I would copy and paste your timeline. So I know this is timeline one, so I could right click on it and I could duplicate the timeline just like that. Uh, or I could have it already selected and I could hit Command C, Command V, and it's gonna do the same thing. Uh, it doesn't really matter, whatever works best for you. So I've got my backup right there. What I would do is open my first timeline and then up here at the tippity top, we would hit timeline and we're gonna go all the way down here to clean up video track. Now there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can change unused clipped colors. So let's try this, let's do teal and it's gonna show me which clips are being unused, which I think is awesome. You could either delete them if you're not wanting to clean everything up, or you could disable it. My shortcut on a Mac is hitting D and it's gonna disable it. What I like to do is I like to go back up to timeline, go to clean up video tracks. You could either disable those unused clips, again, which is doing that shortcut. I think that's super nice. I personally like to go to the clean up video tracks flatten unused clips. And just like magic, it has cleaned up that timeline. Now, it's not gonna flatten everything, but it is gonna make it a lot better than what it was. That could have been 16 layers deep, and let's say it made it three layers deep. That way, when you're doing playback and you've got that random flash frame, it's a lot easier to find than when you're trying to search through multiple layers. Well, there you go. That's my last tip for you guys. I hope you learned something inside DaVinci Resolve today. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, drop a comment below. Let me know what other videos you would like to see in the future, or just let me know your thoughts. You're amazing. I'm the Iron Giant. I'll see you next time. Peace.